Um, so today we have um, CII member Fernando Espana. He's the president of ConstructX and an active leader in our advanced work packaging community at CII. He has the pleasure of introducing today's webinar presenter. So I will go ahead and kick it over to Fernando. And again, thank you all for joining us today. We'll see you at the tail end with the Q&A. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. I uh, appreciate everybody joining today uh, at this, uh, our first uh, webinar for the ADP Plus Lean Joint Working Group. Uh, just to uh, give you a little bit of a heads up, um, you know, I, we tell you a little bit about what we do before we get into uh, Last Planner. I'll introduce uh, Dan, you know, at that time. But just a little background on why we're so excited about this uh, this presentation today, and uh, which will be one of many, is that the, the Joint Working Group has been around for, for a couple of years. And myself um, and uh, John Strickland with Collaborative Flow um, has ha, are the co-chairs, and we have a great uh, number of, uh, of people that are, are represented and have are part of our joint working group. And you can see that uh, quite a few major corporations are represented uh, into the program. So it's it's really exciting, and uh, we've been having lots of, of sessions over the past two years. Uh, a lot of them internally, uh, looking at how do we bring ADP plus lean concepts together. Uh, we've had a lot of internal discussions and we've learned internal, um, uh, you know, not only webinars, but our own working sessions and learning events uh, to, to really prove out the fact that this is very real and it's, uh, it's great. We're, we're taking this to uh, the, the thought of there's a next generation of project delivery. And so this, this uh, next uh, component is very important to us. Um, we, this is the, like I said, this is the first about Last Planner, but every month uh, we are going to have another uh, component of an ADP plus lean concept and how do we, how the two will blend together and contribute, uh, whether or not you're on the ADP uh, advanced work packaging side of the equation, whether you're in the uh, lean construction side of the equation, or whether you're in uh, project production uh, management side of the equation, right? So there's, there's a lot of things out there. And we're trying to bring the best of all best practices to enable organizations, uh, whether you're whether you're uh, you have small project portfolios or whether you you drive the giga projects and the multi billion dollar programs. There is a right choice, a blend of tools that 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 can be applied quite effectively, and um, and really help, I think, push forward the whole concept of improving project delivery and and addressing many of the challenges. Uh, that we are going to be facing here as an industry over the next next decade or two, as uh, we have these resource challenges, supply chain challenges, you know, uh, and and those things that really have to be addressed. So as you can see, we have IDP development release planning next month, uh, modularization and DFMA, which is designed for manufacturing and assembly. You know, in July, target value delivery, big rooms, interactive plannings. You know, with ADP and Lean, how do we bring those together? Site material management. Uh, contracting strategies, look ahead planning, and uh, from a production control perspective, are things that are are going to be uh, on the uh, on our webinar targets. So look forward to um, getting feedback from this one, and uh, looking forward to you either joining the 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 uh, joint working group and being part of that, or uh, you know, or asking you know, asking great questions, or visiting us uh, uh, in the future on, on future webinars. So that's uh, a little bit of the of the. Uh, of about the joint working group. So I'd like to get on with what everybody really is waiting to hear is, um, is my friend, uh, Dan Fasche. I've known Dan for quite a while. Uh, he's been one of the leaders in, in, uh, in the Lean Construction Institute, bringing uh, Lean concepts and bringing organizations together. And uh, as the realignment group uh, indicates, which is very important in ADP, is how do we align people? And uh, Dan has uh, really has this great experience. I've worked with him for a long time. In, in, lean, in lean construction techniques and processes and advancing the industry. So I'm gonna pause there and, uh, and um, Dan, why don't you say a few words about yourself and I'll, I'll get the screen passed over to you as well. Sure, sounds good. Uh, I'm Dan Fauché and I have been for years. <laughs> um, you live long enough, you do a few things, right? You learn a few things. Uh, I've been in development design and construction for over 46 years. Uh, if I told you the actual number, it would depress you. Um, and uh, so one of the one of the things that uh, I was able to do was learn the last planner system from one of the inventors, Greg Howell. Uh, so I'm really pleased that we have uh, to, to be able to explain it today.
for those of you who are interested in it uh, and, and how collaborative it is and, and how it interfaces well with AWP. But I'll let you decide that for yourself. Let's introduce the Last Planner system. Uh, by the way, Last Planner is a registered trademark of the Lean Construction Institute. It's used by permission. They don't charge anybody for using it. They just want to keep the system uh, you know, pure, keep it uh, people using the system the way it's designed. So that when you use the words Last Planner or Last Planner system, it means pretty much the same thing to everyone. So we, we do respect that. Uh, the story of the Last Planner system really begins with trade crews. Uh, you know, if you have a single trade crew, and I'm looking at the screen of effort and time, a single trade crew will mobilize and they'll begin working and they'll ramp up their effort and productivity and, and they'll, uh, they'll get going, uh, you know, pretty well. And all of a sudden, just as they're really hitting the, the, high, the high point, bam, something happens. Uh, an, an answer to an RFI doesn't come in time and they don't know what to do next. So they have to pause, they have to go mobilize and move somewhere else or just stand down or whatever happens. Uh, but it's not a good thing, it's in an interruption. So they finally get the answer, they get going again, going in, going again, and bam, something else happens. The materials don't arrive on time or the equipment broke or so there's always something. Uh, and so the, you know, this, is a, this becomes kind of a, a pattern of, for those of you who, who uh, are into cardiology, it, it almost begins to look like a heart attack. Uh, and we know that that's not a very efficient way, that this start and stop and start and stop is really interrupting and, and inefficient. Uh, people lose money. We lose time. There's one reason why 73 percent of our projects are over budget and 70 percent are, are beyond this, their schedule, the original schedule. So what we're really looking for, isn't it, is flow, uh, is, is the ability to, to smoothly flow at an even pace. Because if you look at it, that's maybe 3,500 RPM, that flow line. The, the, the green line goes up to 7,000 RPM because you're trying to push the crews and, and hurry them up and make up for lost time and all that. And that's not good. Uh, that's not how you become consistently, sustainably productive. So uh, this was noticed um, not only by the whole industry, but by a couple of guys who had gone to Stanford University getting an engineering degree. I mean, Glenn Ballard and Greg Howell. Uh, and in the 80s, uh, having come from slightly separate disciplines in their early work life, they got together and they started collaborating on why the problems of production are so challenging in construction. And, and they began, they, they were using videotape and, and before that film, uh, and they would go out to a job site and they would film or videotape a construction crew and with their permission, of course. And at the end of the day, they would show them the tape and say, now, where, you know, speed it up a little bit. Where, where do you see waste? And people would say, oh, well, look, I, every, every time I want to make a cut, I have to walk around the chop saw and then walk back. I could just turn the chop saw. Yeah, that's, uh, or somebody else notices, I'm, my materials are 100 feet away. I'm staging them too far away from where I'm consuming them. I need to move the materials closer. Say, yeah, that's, that's good. And so uh, what they found was that on any job site and in any trade, there are lots of wastes that, that can be removed to enhance productivity, to reduce lost motion and waiting and all of the classic eight wastes of, of uh, design and construction. And by removing those, you reduce the friction and you can increase the flow. But it didn't quite do the job because there were still problems with handoffs between trades. And the handoffs, you know, just like a relay race, if you drop the baton, the, you, you, you're not gonna win. Uh, and so the handoffs become one of the things that they really began to focus on. And so they, they decided to conduct a study. They went to seven different companies and got from those companies 450 different weekly work plans, foreman's weekly work plans, those sheets of paper on which the foreman had written, by Friday, I will have done X. That's what I'll do this week. And they spread those papers out in front of them and they asked one simple question. What percentage of the time did the foreman complete the work as planned? Now, think about that for a minute, your own experience. What do you think that was? What percentage of the time did the foreman finish on Friday what they promised on Friday? Well, the answer is surprising and sad, uh, 
the uh, the answer is that it it varied from 30 to 70 percent, uh, and the average of that was 54 uh, percent. Glenn, I'm sorry, Greg Howell called that the construction equivalent of pi, uh, 3.1416. It's 54 percent seems to be reliably what the problem is. How can we get that up to 80 to 90 percent? They ask. How can we devise a system that would increase reliability to 80 to 90 percent? because then the job site would become reliable, promises would be kept, work would flow smoothly, not only within a trade, but from one trade to the next, or one activity to the next. And so they began to, to a, a series of uh, experiments that developed into what's now called the last planner system. Why is it called the last planner system, uh, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Most construction projects are planned by a project manager or scheduler, perhaps one or two or a couple of people, usually using P6 or Microsoft Project to create a project schedule. But maybe you've heard of something other project teams are using called the last planner system. So who are the last planners? Well, say you're an owner and you want to build something. You know how much money you have and likely how long you have to build it. But as an owner, do you really know how to build? Probably not. So you hire an architect, and they help refine the cost and how long it will take to build, all based upon what the owner wants. But does the architect really know how to build? Again, probably not. So they bring in a general contractor at some point, and they provide lots of great input about the best way to turn the architect's plans into reality, constructability input. But are they the experts on every single part of how that building will be constructed? Not necessarily. So, who are the last planners? That would be the trade foreman, your electricians, carpenters, elevator techs, and other trades. Because who knows better than an electrician how to install the building's electrical systems? When it comes to things like durations and constraints, he or she knows that they have the A crew or the B crew, what lead times are for key materials, and related problems they've seen on other projects. They are the last ones to see the work before it goes in. They are the last one. So take your collaboration to the next level and make sure to involve the input and decades of experience of your last planners with the last planner system. So in the last planner system, there are three levels, and they look like this. Uh, way up at the top at, at 30,000 feet is the milestone, the strategic plan, the milestone level. And all of us are dealing with milestones all the time. We're used to seeing the milestone view of, of a project. It's the big picture. And if you look out of a plane window at 30,000 feet, what do you see? Not a lot of detail. You can see the lakes, you can see the land, you can see the, the, the beach uh, that separates them. Uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you can see big cities. You might be able to see an interstate highway ribbon running through the land, but you really won't see house numbers or faces or any kind of detail. It's just a big picture. And so with Last Planner, that's the first level is that we develop a milestone plan, typically done on most projects, and it typically is for the whole project, uh, 12 to 18 months, let's say. Uh, then on, uh, on the next level, you fly the plane down to 10,000 feet. Now you're looking at the phase pool. These are the sequences and activities that get handed off from one trade to the next or one activity to the next. It's the 10,000 foot view. And think about when you look out of a plane window at 10,000 feet, what do you hear? What do you see? Well, you hear the noise of the engine, but you see shopping centers. You can tell a church from a school. Uh, you still can't read house numbers or really pick out faces, but you can see a lot of how the, the whole city, for example, is connected, all the connections that are done. And, and so that's the phase pull plan. And both of these are pulls from the right to the left. They're reverse pulls. I'll describe it more in a minute. Then once you have the milestone and phase pulls, now we're looking at landing the plane. That's where we develop the weekly work plan, the schedule, the actual schedule itself. That's where the rubber hits the road. It tends to be a six week schedule. Very often we're used to three week look aheads. This is six weeks, why? because very often there are constraints or little dragons hidden out there that we hadn't noticed before that are maybe five in the fifth and sixth week out. And it may take a month to remedy them, 
to get the answer to the RFI or to get the materials delivered or whatever it may be. And so uh, AWP does a great job of identifying these constraints early. Uh, construction in, in building, in the building sectors, uh, much less of a good job identifying constraints early. We need AWP for that. But uh, the the schedule is where the people actually do the work day by day and perform on time. So let's uh, let's go back to that milestone level and let's dive into it a little bit deeper. Uh, this is an example of all a milestone pull would look like. This happens to be a virtual pull on Miro, but uh, it, we do it with stickies, and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so you have a milestone at the very end. It's, Certificate of occupancy, or turning it over to the uh, to the owner for use uh, by the owner, uh, whatever that last milestone, that completion milestone is, we start there, and we say, okay, what is the big chunk of work that happens just before that, and that becomes the next milestone, moving right to left, and then just before that, and then just before that, and we start to populate what is just a big white space here. It could be a plotter paper, or it could be a white space online. And and we begin to see how the milestones all fit together. We're not putting dates to them yet. We're again, we're looking at sequences, but we're getting the big picture. So it, once we have the milestone plan done, we then fly the plane down to 10,000 feet and we take those milestones and we pick one that we're going to pull from. Now, in a phase pull, it's a two to four month period of time. The milestone may be the whole project, the milestone level, but the phase pull will be a two to four month period of time because there's so much more detail. It begins to look like this. And each color is a different trade and each tag is a different activity. One crew in one place doing one thing. And in this case, we have swim lanes. Level one is administration. Level two is classrooms. Level three is class or labs. In, uh, in, e in uh, EPC, it, it could be one of, the, one of the swim lanes could be systems. Uh, you know, which tend to be vertical uh, across some of these more physical things. So there are a variety of ways to plan this, but you want to be able to group things in a way that make logical sense. And you pull it from right to left, just like with the milestone. You start with the end in mind and say what happens just before that and just before that. And what do those tags actually have on them? Again, pulling backwards, they, they, they look like this. Uh, there's people in real life, those are real people, these are not actors, uh, and uh, and they're, they're trade foremen for the most part, and they're filling out tags and populating what was the milestone, a chunk of the milestone plan. They're populating it as the phase pool plan. And the tags they're writing on very often look like this. The big chunk of, of uh, a blank space is the activity. One crew, one place, one thing. And it needs to be descriptive. You can't just say electrical. It run conduit, for example. And then it's highly desirable on that tag to know your crew size, because that'll tell you duration based on productivity. And then just below the big gap for activity is predecessor. What is the thing that you have to have done before you can start your work with intention to finish? And are there any constraints that will stop you before you start the work or at some point during the process of the work. And that's the kind of information we're looking for on these tags. So there's uh, my colleague, Kyle Martinez in the red shirt. He looks like he's, they've done a reverse pull. They've done the backward pass. And now he's doing a forward pass to make sure that it passes the laugh test, that they can actually build it this way. Because just like in CPM, there's a forward and backward pass. In Last Planner, it's the reverse. There's a backward and then a forward pass. And it's a, it's a better way to work. So there's the phase pool. Let's look at the weekly work plan. How does all this become a schedule? <coughs> there you go, right there. We we use boards. Now, we happen to have a preference for uh, if you're in the non-virtual world, uh, we a preference for gator boards. They're lightweight, they're sturdy, and you can have seven days of the week, and you can have a, you know 21 or 22 four-inch uh, rows where you put the various tags. And the rows typically uh, are divided into areas. So at the very top, there's one area up in there, and then you see a blue painter's tape band across it. And then there's a bunch of other tags, and you see how those are working. Uh, and you can you put the colored tags together in the same work area, 
because it'll show you where the handoffs are or where the conflict of crews is, and it'll help you smooth things out. And you can see down toward in the the, the middle, uh, just to the right of that fellow who's who's in the uh, black and gray uh, stripes, you can see there's a yellow tag just at the end of a red tag. That's a handoff. A and then the yellow tag will continue. So this is how they're planning their work. They're moving the activity sequence into actual day-by-day -day activities. Uh, here's another example. On the left, on the wall, is the phase pool plan. That's their 10,000-foot view, and they're working from that. They did that collaboratively and figured out the best way to do it. Now they're moving the tags over to those six weekly work plan boards on the right, and each week they strip one, move it down, and do the and it becomes a new week six. And notice where the tables aren't. The tables aren't in, between everybody. Uh, they're not sitting at a big boardroom table uh, and po posturing uh, and not in interacting. They're actually able to go to the board, go to the wall, and, and touch and collaborate. Uh, again, uh, there's the, on the right-hand side, there's the phase pull. That's the plan. And to the left, there's the weekly work plan. They're developing. They're now working on the third week, and they've got three more weeks to go in this particular shot. <clears throat> the, the foremen tend to bring the work they had done back at the office, planning their own work. They tend to bring that data to the plan and then share it with the other crews uh, and the other foremen so that the plan actually is collaborative. And it looks, it ends up looking something like this. So how do you keep a plan real? You, you and I both know that uh, a schedule is out of date the next day. The, you, can, you can create the most elegant, brilliant schedule in the world, and it's out of date the next day because stuff happens. Uh, you know, no, no plan survives the first encounter with the enemy. Uh, and, and so on a daily basis, the crew gets together for no more than 15 minutes, five to 15 minutes, sometime during the day, whenever they want together, whenever's most convenient, 6 a.m., right after the crews are mobilized and they can pull each other together or noon or toward the end of a shift. And they, the, the superintendent or the one who's leading the daily huddle asks three simple questions. Did you do your work yesterday as planned? What did you do? And they mark off the tag. What are you doing today? Are you still on track to meet your promise today? And third, what do you need to make sure from us, what do you need from us to make sure your plan is still gonna be good tomorrow? So it's a very quick exchange. There, it, rarely are they sitting. This, in this particular case, they are. But usually they're standing around the board because uh, people standing talk less than people sitting. Uh, and uh, and it, this is a key element of that. Then there's a weekly meeting. All, all crews have a foreman's meeting once a week, right? Uh, and in this weekly meeting, right after the safety moment, it, the, the first thing they talk about is updating the weekly work plan. They look at the, what they did the last week. They calculate what's called PTC, percent of promises complete or percent plan complete. Uh, and, and for each thing that was missed, they asked why. Not once, five times. It's another one of those lean principles. Simple, why, 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 why? Drill down to the root cause and then begin to categorize the reason for variance. Are the reasons that we're missing our, our promises, are they because of equipment, because of failed inspections? Are they, are they is it a supply chain issue? Why are we missing these so we can go work on it? Then they move, that's the did, what we did last week. They move to the rest of the looking ahead through the next five weeks, six weeks. What should we be able to do? We review the milestones. There should be milestones on these boards that tell us where the goals are. Look at the big picture. What's the next thing we're shooting for? And they'll plan the sixth week because recall it's a sixth week look ahead. They have removed all the tags on the left board on, that was last week and moved it down. Now they're reviewing all the work and they're identifying constraints in what's called a make work ready process. And this is right out of AWP in many ways, but it's contemporaneous to the moment what new circumstances have occurred? What things didn't happen that we're supposed to? What things did we not know that we have to now know? 
Uh, and so they look at what they actually can do to hit that big picture should. And then once that information is digested by the group, they make commitments for the coming week. That's what they will do. So it's a four phase schedule, did, should, can, will. Now, how do you be successful? Because anything can get screwed up, right? Uh, I mean, you can, it's possible to screw up a one car funeral. Uh, so how can you be successful using this system? Well, you have the kickoff on the left, that we were describing, and there's a little more to it than that. I was I was looking at a chunk of number three there when I was describing the the pool planning, but you know we, there's a little bit of introduction to the last planner system, uh, some pre-planning meetings, uh, obviously, and then the kickoff could be one or two days depending on the size of the project and the number of trades involved, and then there's continuous follow-up because since the project may be 18 months, but the phase pool plan is only two to four you need a series of phase pool plans. So it looks kind of like this in terms of how you break out the hours. And the kickoff, it's never one and done. It's a total mistake to think that you have a kickoff, you do a pool plan and you're done. Nope, you have to continue those additional phase pool plans. And then the daily huddles, that's where the meat of this is. And if you don't do daily huddles in the last planner system, you won't, benefit from the system because things change every day. And the beauty of this system is it's not stuck in a rear view mirror. It's not updated once a month or, or twice a month. It's updated daily. It's always current. It's always real. And people can, can trust that this is the plan and the schedule. And then once a week, you do that weekly work plan, typically a half hour or slightly more. Uh, and so that's how the, the percentages break out. But but it, it's only 108 hours total for, for a, a one-year project, typical 12-month project. But the bulk of that time is spent in keeping the plan current. Now, this is an interesting uh, shot, and I've got a couple of angles of this one. This is a Turner construction job. Uh, here you will see this is during COVID lockdown. Uh, so there, there are marks on the floor where people can stand. They're wearing masks. Uh, and the weekly work plan boards, the six of them are at the far end of the room. And the project manager and one of the project engineers are kind of there running it. Typically, without COVID distancing, we like to have everybody gather around and they're interacting themselves with the boards. But in this case, they needed to have it done verbally. Uh, but you can see that there's also a fellow on the left, uh, just to the, to the in, in an orange jacket, just to the left, of the uh, of the green uh, he's leaning against a whiteboard that whiteboard contains the constraint log and he's listening are there are there constraints that people are describing about how things are about to happen or how they're planning their work and he's actively writing down the constraint and who's going to remove it and and by when when is it needed uh, and then on the other side there are other kinds of notes that are being taken answers to rfis that are needed some of those kinds of things uh, same group, different angles, so it looks like fewer people, but that's just because of distancing. Uh, very similar kind of information. Uh, I just want to, I just want to give you a sense of what it takes for a collaboration to really be effective. Now I want to show you what a live session looks like. And to do that, I need to go to a video. Now I'm starting uh, a little bit into this video and uh, about two minutes and 20 seconds into it, 219. This is, I, I, please turn up your volume uh, because this, is, this the sound is becoming through my speakers. Uh, and uh, this is a, a planning session on a high school campus in Northern California. It's one building, building G, of several that are on the campus. It's a two-story building. Uh, they're going to make a milestone plan. They're gonna pull the milestones for this building. You'll see two facilitators. You see them on the left and right in the black shirt and the gray shirt. And there's the superintendent from Swinerton right in the center. Uh, the trades are just at the bottom of the camera shot and behind the camera. Uh, and everything else, I think, will be self-explanatory. Like I said yesterday, don't wait to write all, all of your tags and look at, at each other and figure out who's going to be the first one up there. Just write one, put it up. Right one, put it up, start at the end, work backwards, and then we'll work it as we go.
So let's take a look at where the trade contractors are actually putting their tags. You've heard that we're creating an area for floor one and for floor two, but we also created a work area for the steel erection milestones that are going to happen beforehand. You'll later see being able to keep it so visual allows everyone to better plan their work. Listen to the hum of the room and the types of collaborative conversations that are happening in the background. Okay, rough. So he's like, it's just, yeah, we'll just turn it. Okay. So you don't need to stand, but just come close, arm's length as best, roll on over or walk on over, please. Sometimes people come to the board willingly, and sometimes you need to encourage them. The point is, is we, we want to be able to read it. That's, that's my condition of satisfaction. You can read this, then you're close enough. All right. So what it's going to happen is I'm just going to start walking through a little bit. I'm probably going to get around somewhere over here that I'm just going to hand it off to you. You're going to continue as we go through. Um, remember, this is just a high level strategy of all the feats that need to hit. So it's not going to be very detailed, um, but it's just going to say this is what we should do to get over there. Knowing there's a lot more detail at this point. We're only worried about sequence. So the first thing is uh, we're poor slab on grade for building G. And the next thing is we are laying out curves. And then we're calling steel erection done as the next file summer we're going to hit. That's correct. All right. And then after that, uh, plumb and bolt and weld, bolt and weld done. And at that point, are we saying this high level? Project level milestone steel erection complete is right here. Now, normally I would consider the decks mm -hmm. part of the steel erection, mm -hmm. so we're going to need to move this over just a little bit because I'd like to include the second floor deck and the roof deck. Right? So, That's what I'm thinking was we'll put those decks, boom, boom. Notice here we're only working on done milestones. Either the work is complete or not. Because they're going to go really fast sequential with this. I'm just going to put with decks. We're also better defining the plan, making the changes on the board, and then doing it in front of everybody. Okay, great. All right, so Keep going. Look at second floor deck is going to go right here. We're keeping them on board. And we're Notice how we have someone in the foreground helping the superintendent, helping them by moving some of the tags down and giving them some room to work with on the paper. Now that would represent Okay, so now we're going to start our insert. This superintendent does a really good job of talking out loud and looking back at the trade contractors and getting their input. Him moving the tags is based on what they tell him. His audience is engaged and physically interacting with the milestone plan. At this point, we're ready for slab on second floor rebar. And again, listen to the discussion going on. They're talking about detailed work that's coming months out. They truly understand the job way before they need to. So our exterior walls, with the exception of some parts of the second floor, come right off of the exterior curves that are being poured monolithic. Great, just so everybody knows. So glazing's going in. Okay, second floor wall rough complete. Now we're talking uh, the modeling. The superintendent does a great job of ensuring this stays the trades schedule here. Why don't you guys help me out here? Can I get both of you up here, find your tags, and let's kind of put them in now where they go. Everyone plays a part in creating the plan. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. This is that. Right about here. I appreciate the assistance, folks. The superintendent acts as an orchestra leader, facilitating all these discussions. Before the interior wall runs. Well, right Here, a trade lets the superintendent know the sequence that works best for him. Okay. 
The facilitators stay in contact about the needs for the room and the needs for the pool plant. To building H, the plumber's going to take a much bigger piece because there's there's science, it's a science building, and there's lots of plumbing. Science okay. requires a lot of plumbing. And it doesn't hurt to throw a joke in there every once in a while. A lot of mistakes in science. <laughs> that's why that's, that's, that's why doctor practices. That's uh, <laughs> that's okay. And finally, we have a sequence of milestones that need to be completed, brought together by everyone doing the work. In my world, I love a beautiful, clean roof when we're done. Okay. So we'll give them a chance to make a little bit of a mess, but no screws, no punch or no punctures, <laughs> just scuff marks. And then when you come in, you're turning over a thing of beauty, and Larry's going to come up there, inspect it, and give us all the okay. All right. So that's what a live session looks and feels like. And now it's time for Q&A. Do we have questions? So the first one is, to what extent can planning and last planner, oh, T-A-K-T planning and last planner coexist? Do they complete each other? Does one eliminate the other? Great question. Thank you for that. And I've learned a lot in the last year about that. Uh, in fact, we developed a, a, a course on that with from Spencer Easton. So last planner system, the pool plan, the phase pool plan gives you sequence. Uh, and then you go to a weekly work plan on the boards. Yeah. Act is at the weekly work plan level, drawing from the, the sequence of the phase pool. So uh, you can do it other ways. But the way we combine last planner and tact is uh, is is tact is the creation of uh, tact wagons and tact trains. It's repeatable sequences of work that are divided into a certain number of days, so that each of the activity trades uh, takes the same amount of time, has the same amount of time, because you you uh, divide the work as there's a process for that. There's an Excel spreadsheet that makes it easier There's a, to divide the work so that what you now have is really enhanced flow. So the, the short answer is TACT takes last planner to the next level of flow. Great. Yeah. Okay. And then my next question I have is who participates in the meeting to review the WWP? Uh, all of the trades, the superintendent, assistant superintendents, uh, project manager is very often there. Uh, it's an all hands kind of thing. Everybody needs to be there. Now, if it's a very large project, uh, it, each of those meetings may have, may, there may be several concurrent meetings and they're run each by their own superintendent or assistant superintendent. They, uh, they work together in this, but uh, it's, it needs to be definitely the foreman who are on site. Uh, definitely the leadership in the field uh, and preferably with the office leadership as well. Thank you. Our next question, where does WFP fit into the last planning? Um, I don't know enough about workplace planning to be able to answer that question elegantly. Fernando probably does. Uh, yeah. they, they, they do similar things. Uh, Right now, what, what would you answer that? Yeah, uh, very good question because uh, we've been we've been working on 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 the in, entirety of of how does last planner fit into advanced work packaging, <clears throat> and there are several instances. Uh, in fact, uh, I have a couple other questions. But the work based planners, you know, who co collaborate with their with the general foreman and foreman, you know, should be participating in in these uh, in these uh, uh, weekly work planning sessions. Right, because they're going to learn a lot, um, not only about what others are doing and their constraints, especially around prerequisite work that affects their they, their installation work package, for instance. Uh, but they will also be able to um, identify constraints uh, that need to be resolved by maybe another team. So the workplace planner, uh, in this case, uh, would would be a, a participant in the weekly work plan 
uh, in the work planning process, let's put it that way, to arm the foreman and the general foreman to, to free up what might be constraints or get more reliable planning uh, on what can and can't be done, especially as things move into the look ahead process. <clears throat> so that's that's where I see it uh, for for the uh, workplace for the workplace planner. Um, I I also uh, you know wanted to to bring up uh, the fact that uh, you know Dan's talking a, a lot about uh, you know foreman and general foreman uh, being involved in, in advanced milestones. But I was hoping, Dan, that you you also could um, even co comment about the the front end work that's being done uh, in bringing engineering. And sure. uh, in fact, that's why I showed I'm showing this. There's you know engineering and what they do is in their deliverables have their own opportunity to do last planner. So maybe you can speak a little bit about that. Sure, last planner is really uh, valuable and elegant in design uh, and in the engineering phase, the pre engineering or pre construction phase. Uh, it, it, the, the process is the same. It's just different people. Uh, if it's an architectural uh, oriented uh, activity, then it would be the architect uh, or the, or the, and, and the project manager instead of the superintendent. Uh, although the, in, in design build, everyone should be there as well. But in, for engineers, this is, this is a really great solution to be able to understand how the components fit together. For example, uh, we did uh, for for a very large development company doing a, a large apartment complexes, uh, they were doing engineering and, and uh, design. And what they found was that, they, that, that each of the different consultants thought they had to finish their whole package and throw it over the transom in order to provide information to each other, to others who needed the information. Turns out they didn't. The, the, the successor would just say, all I need, I don't need your whole package. I just need to know what is the calculation for this or what is the weight on this or what is, you know. And so there were pieces of information that become available that you, that you can do in design that advances the speed of the design and the interface, the elegance of the design. And so one of the phrases we use is do work first that releases other work. And this is true in design, and this is true in construction. Thank you both. Okay, I have another great question here. How is the last planner system different from an integrative project planning meeting, IPPM? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not experienced with IPPM. Uh, integration sounds like it's pretty similar. We're talking about collaboration and integration. I do not know what IPPM is, sorry. Interactive, yeah, okay, that came to us from our friends at Burns and Mac. We'll circle back with them later. All right, uh, sorry. I'm, yeah, that's I, okay. I have to age a few more years before I know all these answers. Hey, Ben, <laughs> can you hear me now? I'm here. Yeah, John's here. Oh, hi, John. John Strickland. Actually, just to, so, hey, real quick. Uh, the, the IPPM and the pull session are uh, phase pull session are very similar. Uh, the big difference is the last planner system happens again and again and again. And ah. so, uh, the, usually the IPPM is more like one big coordination event at the start of the job, which is a which in the last planner system would be maybe the first meeting. The kickoff, uh, yeah, right. The last planner system continues week after week after week. Got it. Thank you, John. Whoever asked, the answer, whoever asked the question? Yeah, that came from my friends at Burns and Mac. Hey. Well, you might even know them, John. Mike. All right, lovely. Um, okay, next question is, what is the impact of using the last oh. planner system in empowering trades to share their knowledge and retain their for future projects? Also, is the LPS best applicable for a specific type of project timeline, such as one year versus two year? No, I've, I've, I've done uh, entire pool plan uh, and last planner uh, work on an eight week project, a lot of them for schools uh, when they're shut down during the summer. Uh, and we've done them for three, four year projects, five year. Fernando and I we were involved in one that, that we weren't sure you know, how long it was going to take because it's so doggone you know, two billion dollar thing. Uh, but uh, it's 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 scalable to to any size. It's the idea of collaboration and it's the processes that work. 
Uh, repeat the first part of that question, though. Okay, I apologize. Let me go back to it. It's uh, okay. What is the impact of using the last planner system in empowering trades to share their knowledge and yeah. retain for future projects? This is tricky. Uh, first of all, uh, trades have traditionally been the target of that. You know, it all rolls downhill. They've been the they've been the ones to be blamed. They've been the ones who who just take it uh, and, and who don't have enough duration for the work that's done or or they sandbag or whatever. There's been a lot of lack of trust uh, over the years, uh, over the decades. Uh, this changes the playing field because the trades now understand that they actually will be heard. They actually do get to have input. It is collaborative. It's not the inmates running the asylum by any stretch of the imagination, but it is each of us expressing exactly how long something takes or the conditions preceding to my being able to start with intention to finish. And as they begin to see it work, and they do, uh, they then buy into that, uh, that I, don't, I don't need to hide float in my activity. I don't need to take say it takes 10 days when it takes seven uh, because I can share that float amongst all of us and we'll use it when we need it. And, and so trust develops. And we, in the very first session, we start that process of, of adopting by asking them what's working and not working in the old school, current type of scheduling and hear what they're saying and then say, how about if we could reverse that? How about if instead of you being told you've got three days to do this work and you, you know it takes seven, how about if we just ask you how long it's going to take? And then we figure out how we're going to make that work within the milestone target that we have to hit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, the next question is, could the work face planners facilitate the last planner sessions? Fernando, I don't know why not. Yeah, I mean, just somebody that understands relationships and more of a facilitator and not a uh, yeah. director. Yeah. Uh, you really could have somebody that's responsible that could do that. Uh, that, I mean, we, do we, that. De we described the role of the construction superintendent as being orchestra leader, uh, which is very different from old school. Um, and and so it doesn't the the one who facilitates that means that they're making they're enabling others to do the work they're facilitating they're they're causing the work to be doable they understand the process asking good questions so literally anyone we've had trade contractors facilitate weekly work plan sessions lovely Okay, our next question is, how does last planner system fit when developing the schedule durations before work starts? Usually that information is not available. Yeah, but it's available to somebody. Uh, the, the last planners, the trade foremen, their companies bid this job or, or estimated or whatever the, the process was to get hired. They figured out in the estimated area about how long it was going to take. They didn't know if they were going to use the A crew, the B crew, or the C crew. So they didn't know what the pro the true productivity rate would be in the field. And and the foreman now knows that. Um, but the the foreman is informed by the estimate that was the company had put together of how long it would take, which very often gets locked into contract, uh, and and then needs to be able to update that with new information more accurate information and it goes both ways it can it can be shorter or longer duration but the duration then becomes the more the closer you get to it the more real it is glenn ballard has a saying the longer you plan the wronger you plan and so we know that if you plan how long it's going to take very far in advance you're going to be off i do not know what i'm going to have for breakfast three years from tuesday um but the closer you get to it you can pretty much figure it out. Perfect. What additional steps, and it says, what additional steps, insights, and benefits does LPS bring to project delivery efficiency beyond traditional CPM method? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, it, it opens it up so that we're doing, we're planning and executing and living and dying as a group and not individually. Uh, individuals are uh, are responsible for their own promises, but 
we when we measure that PPC, that percent of promises complete on a weekly basis, it should be between 80 and 90. <coughs> Pardon me. When we measure that, that's the team's metric. That's not an individual's metric. We don't report individual metrics. We know them. And if we need to, we can go talk to the foreman who's letting letting down on the job. But uh, but we we do everything as a team. So it changes the the mindset. It changes it from a, a me to us uh, mindset. There are also a number of other benefits in terms of the impacts to the culture of the project. Uh, and uh, actually, Dr. Thais Alvis at San Diego State and I did a paper uh, for the International Group for Lean Construction on last planner is the gateway to lean behavior. Uh, so I'll be happy to share that with you. Uh, and it, it's, it, dis, it cites not only what lean behaviors look like, um, but it, it also cites examples of specific projects where that has occurred. A lot of benefits. Wonderful. Okay, this looks like it might be a question for Fernando. Yay. When a, yay. When applying advanced work packaging, should engaging the appropriate superintendents foremen and trade personnel at the right time in work-based planning activities also help bring about an optimized sequence as in last planner approach? Uh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, there's a big drive to understanding that the earlier you bring in your, um, your construction um, trade contractors and all those that are going to be involved in construction later on, the earlier you bring them into the front end planning side, the more the, the better sequences and, and thoughts and processes that you're going to get on the back end. Now, uh, when do you bring them in? You know, uh, because a lot of a lot of contracts aren't really released until until later. Uh, but the but the agility that we need to appreciate uh, that is built into advanced for packaging, in my mind, if we do it right, you know, we held path of construction events, and in between each path for construction event, we should be having last planner events to really drive uh, knowledge. But when it gets finally turned over to construction, you know, uh, the, the teams, when we start with a construction work package and start developing the installation work packages, this is exactly the time when superintendents, foremen, general foremen can all be involved with not only the, the sequencing of our installation work packages to help optimize it, but the integration across installation work packages, you know, um, as well. And then when those get ready, because the whole idea is constraint this constraint free work packs, right? That's the whole mantra. And then when those go drop into the look ahead plans of, of the construction teams to actually go execute, there's all that field coordination that last planner can, can effectively address. So I can see this progression uh, for sure in advanced work packaging where all these focus areas of, of, of last planner, uh, and it doesn't mean that you have one big team for one big project. In fact, we've worked on several where some of these, you know, you have multiple teams in, in a last planner event, and then somebody integrating across those teams, right? Because you can't yeah. possibly consume everything on a two billion dollar program, you yeah. know, as you can on a three hundred thousand dollar program. So uh, there, there is that balance. But absolutely, yes, uh, we bringing them in, we will get better um, outcomes uh, for sure in terms of how we optimize. How we on the things. really on on the really big projects, Fernando, you and I have experienced this. That you probably need software. Uh, not P6 software necessarily, uh, yeah. but there are some really good pieces of software out there that will help integrate the, the multiple teams that you're describing so that you can see it all and coordinate it all. Uh, and yeah. and uh, if, it, if it's that big, you probably do need some electrons involved. Yeah, yeah. So you don't get stuck into the fact, well, gee, I spent all this time building this, this schedule. I, I don't want to break it off so you know break it apart and, and redo it you know right. even though it makes sense to do it so you do need some some software tools that uh that enable you to not only leverage the data that's coming in but to make yeah. those kind of agile changes in real time yeah. right. cool okay how to manage the ppc to reduce the constraints the the make work ready process that's a weekly process the make work ready process is the way you, in last planner, is the way you remove constraints that pop up that that are new. You should have figured them out. One of the one of the attractive this attractive features of AWP is how rigorous it is and how disciplined it is at removing constraints before the package is ever released. 
that's a big plus. And we don't do that as well as we should and could in, in lean, in the lean community. So we're learning from AWP and CII about better ways to do that. And that's the, the adventure that Fernando and John and, and others and I are involved in. It, it, that's one of the really great benefits on the last planner side. But the make work ready process often can, can go as far as using visualization exchange of information, a dialogue, a question and answer between, for example, the superintendent and the trade foreman. Tell me where you're going to stage the material for the thing, this thing that's coming up. Where are you going to stage it? How many people are you going to have? Where are they going to come in? Uh, what are you going to do about that new overhead thing? Uh, you know, uh, the, you work through visually how this is all going to, to play out and, I, and you uncover constraints and uh, and, and roadblocks that you you had not previously imagined uh, so it's it's a rigorous process but it occurs weekly yeah thank you our next question is lps was introduced more than 20 years ago what will be the next evolution of lps uh next gen we're working on it yeah <laughs> i mean yeah. Uh, that's that's the evolution glenn ballard uh, Greg Howe passed away a few years ago, and we miss him very much. But Glenn Ballard is still going strong, uh, and it was Glenn's master, uh, a PhD dissertation that canonized Last Planner in the year 2000. Uh, Glenn has uh, Last Planner uh, 2.0 uh, with additional metrics and some additional things. There's, there's a, it's, it's really great that there's a continuous evolution. You know the, the. Uh, plan, do, check, adjust cycle that Deming described uh, is at work in all of these processes. And frankly, the next gen that, that we're all working on, the AWP plus lean next gen is, is, is a realizing, realizable uh, and, and relatively imminent uh, unfolding of that. Yeah, and, and the beauty of that's going to be is how much of one should I apply, right? Yeah. Because the, the mindset is, well, I'm either doing ADP or I'm doing lean or I'm doing this and I gotta do everything or I think I'm doing everything, in reality, that's not true, right? It's It may not fit every single project, yeah. but blends of them absolutely will, you know, yeah. and certain principles, lean principles or constraint management principles are, are going to be solid across anything you do, whether you're a small project or a large project, right? But uh, what, rather than label things all the time, you know, say, what is that next generation gonna look like? It's gonna be people by, you know, making choices of yeah. what really fits well, and what's my, and, and what not only fits well, but what how does it fit in with the objective of the project, right? Am I trying to trying to lower costs? Am I trying to save time? Am I what am what am I doing? And what's that blend of tools that now is in my toolkit that I can pull from uh, to to really optimize uh, the project delivery program? The the old uh, paradigm of construction 30, 40 years ago was ignorance and brute force, right? <laughs> uh, we we've gotten smarter. Uh, a few decades have passed, and we have not done as well at including, increasing our productivity and being on time and all that. So necessity is the mother of invention, and uh, we're, there's a there's a whole lot of us working on getting smarter on this. Yes. Thank you both. Well, we have reached the top of the hour. I wanted to thank you both for your time, for sharing your knowledge today with the members of CII, and for all of you who tuned in today. We do appreciate your time. Um, I will. There are a few folks here, Joseph, Ricardo, there's Tyrone, a handful of you, we've not been able to get your questions. We'll circle back with you via email and do appreciate each of you tuning in today. And we look forward to seeing those of you who can make it to San Antonio, August 1st and 2nd at the CII Annual Conference. And many of you others will see uh, at an upcoming CII webinar. Thank you all. Enjoy your day. Thanks, Thanks Thank Jenny. You. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all. Take care. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Thanks.